Hello and welcome to my channel TFF, Teacher from Finland. My name is Jouni Vilkka and I am a teacher from Finland. This video is part of my series Introduction to Ethics and the subject of this video is the meta-ethical theory called prescriptivism or universal prescriptivism. But first, if you are interested in philosophical ethics, I suggest you subscribe to my channel and click the thumbs up button. Emotivism is the meta-ethical theory that moral statements only express emotions and attitudes. So the statements are not factual in the same way other opinions can be. That means it is a form of non-cognitivism. Prescriptivism is similar to emotivism and can be considered a form of emotivism. Where it differs from the basic type of emotivism is in how it sees those moral statements. Richard Mervyn Hare explained that such statements do not only, or most importantly, express emotions, but their role in speech is most significantly in the prescriptive nature. A moral statement, such as stealing is wrong, does not only announce my dislike of stealing, but also, and more importantly, directs other people to not steal and possibly even to punish those caught stealing. The statement most importantly prescribes or commands behavior. Unlike mere announcements of personal preference, moral statements seem to carry more force. They are superior to other kinds of prescriptions and inherently demand to be given precedence over other considerations. They are overriding prescriptions. For example, let's imagine I am about to enter a restaurant. It is considered good manners to hold the door open for others, and I happen to agree with that. Importantly, although it is good manners, it is not a moral prescription. Now, as I am entering the restaurant and happen to be presently holding the door open, I witness someone stealing a purse from an old frail person inside the restaurant and then trying to exit through the door I am currently holding open. The condemnation of stealing is a moral matter, so it overrides the mere manners, and so I slam the door shut in front of the stupid thief, thus blocking their exit. Preventing theft, in this case at least, is more important than acting according to good manners. According to Hare, a moral statement is also a universal imperative, in the sense that it is not thought to apply only in the current circumstances, but in all significantly similar circumstances and to everyone. Everyone who sincerely accepts the moral judgment will then also act according to it themselves, because morals require consistency. Theories like this that claim that accepting a moral judgment motivates the person to behave according to that judgment are called internalist theories. Internalism, or at least the requirement of consistency, is why hypocrisy is frowned upon. It is also where moral value statements differ from other value statements. When I state that stealing is wrong, I want everyone to accept and agree with the statement. But when I state that the tom yum made by the chef of the restaurant whatever in Tampere is the best dish, I don't expect everyone to agree with me. The latter is just a matter of taste, but morals are not generally thought to be just a matter of taste. The requirement of universality is the reason why Hare's view is also called universal prescriptivism. Following the requirement of prudence, Hare accepts preference utilitarianism, the view that the moral agents should strive to maximize the satisfaction of their preferences. 
In this he is trying to combine Kantian ethics with utilitarianism. I will return to both of those views later when discussing normative ethics. What matters here is the universality of the prescription and the fact that universal prescriptivism recognizes the conflicts between various different preferences. Kant ignored personal preferences and utilitarianism generally disdains universal rules focusing on the end results rather than the means to achieve them. One problem with prescriptivism actually follows from universalism. In understanding moral statements as universal rules, it can make individual choices immoral even if they are supererogatory. I have already made a video about supererogatory acts, so if you haven't seen it already, follow the link below. There have been cases where someone decided to sacrifice their own life to help others, knowing full well what the price will be for themselves. Pietarinen and Poutanen recount the case of Captain Oates of the Scott expedition in Antarctica. The injured captain decided to walk into a snowstorm to die so as not to burden the rest of the struggling expedition. This is a supererogatory act that he probably would not have required of others, even though he saw it as the right thing for himself to do. To say that his act was moral uh, runs the risk of demanding that everyone sacrifice their lives the same way, which might seem a bit much to ask of most people. But to accept that there are different rules for different people would go against universality. It might be possible to formulate a universal rule that solves the problem, but I will leave that for you to think about. So, submit your suggestions in the comments below. <laughs> That's it for today. Thank you for watching and I hope you'll come back for more videos in the future. And in the meantime, check out my list of videos for ones you haven't seen yet. Bye for now. If you wish to support my channel, please click thumbs up, subscribe and share my videos. Any comments on the videos would also be welcome.